analysis. Uh, our first talk will be given by Zhou Zhaocun, and uh, the title of his talk is Vectorial Decoding Algorithm for Fast Correlation Attack and Its Applications to Stream Cipher Green. Uh, the authors are Zhou Zhaocun, Feng Dengguo, Zhang Bin. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm very glad to make a report here. The title is Vectorial Decoding Algorithm for Fast Correlation Attack and uh, its Applications to Stream Cipher Green 1288. This report includes five parts. Firstly, we introduce backgrounds, LFSR based stream ciphers from an important class of a stream cipher system. Gravity analysis based on correlation plays an important role in their evaluations. For example, FCA and LDA, according to the coding strategies, FCA can be divided into two classes. The first one is based on one pass decoding algorithm. The second one is based on probabilistic iterative decoding algorithm. However, applications of iterative decoding are limited as its properties are hard to describe by mathematical language. It lacks of a convenient iterative decoding algorithm to work with a multidimensional linear approximation. Mm. Firstly, we review the binary iterative decoding algorithm proposed by Mir. Its purpose is to improve the time complexity of FCA that is thought to be uh, exponential, exponential to the length of the LFSR. The critical part uh, of the decoding phase is calculating a posterior probability P star from priori distribution symbol by symbol through Bayer's formula instead of uh, directly determining zero or one. The more parity checks holds the lower value P star when the number of positions with, with large P star is greater than the threshold value performed a complement. Mm. Our work consists of three parts. Uh, firstly, we propose a vectorial iterative decoding algorithm for FCA that generalizes the binary algorithm. It may benefit from a multidimensional linear approximation and it equips to novel a criterion to improve the iterative decoding process. Secondly, we propose some cryptographic properties on the vectorial algorithm, such as the relationship between the decoding efficiency and the noisy distribution. Also, two propositions involving the uh, relationship between the number of the parity checks, the noise distribution, and the data complexity. Finally, we apply those results to stream cipher green one to eight a and show its security margin from the perspective of vectorial decoding. The second part, vectorial iterative algorithm and FCA. <coughs> Firstly, <coughs> the FCA based on a vectorial iterative algorithm exploits a symmetric channel. Suppose a linear approximation with dimension M has the following form, where all U, I, and V, I are M times W matrices over GF2. Tx and Tz are set of indexes related to the linear approximation. Similarly, as BSC, the channel noisy is XORed to the code word. Next, we discuss how to check parity with vectorial noises. Uh, suppose a parity check over matrix ring has the following form. We require that for each GK, <coughs> there is M times M matrix GK prime satisfies, satisfies that UI GK equals to GK prime UI. Then multiplying with these UIs, we have the following equation. The target is to determine the noisy E of each position <coughs> when observing check values, which can be accomplished by a vectorial iterative decoding algorithm. Similarly, as the binary case, we calculate APP from the priori distribution according to check values by Bayer's formula. For each sample, we compute APP and increase uh, 
empirical vector ERTR, if E is still increasing, then we assign priority uh, pro distribution with APP and continue iterating. The specific algorithm is as follows. The algorithm still includes a few rounds and each round includes several iterations. In each iteration, we record the number of the positions with P star uh, greater than P zero by an iterator vector, C line five to nine. If this number increases, we continue the iteration and write the iteration vector into a round vector. C line 10, else when the round vector increases very little, we try to infuse bias noise sequence C line 13. Otherwise, we complement the sequence by zeta with the most frequency. <coughs> we performed scaled experiments to verify the vectorial algorithm. We choose LFSR to be this, take channel capacity, the number of parity checks, the if use noises to verify the word error ratio. For example, uh, comparing the curve 112919 with the curve 112636I19, uh, we see that the speed of the convergence increases with the number of uh, parity checks when channel capacity is uh, fixed. Here, the one two means the criteria one and criteria two, the 19 is the um, uh, 19 denotes the data length is two to the 19th power. In the vectorial uh, algorithm, we propose uh, two cr criteria, one right? passing through sufficient iterations before breaking up and say, resetting. If a new APP strengthens the complement, continue iterating, otherwise select the complement coin with the potential largest complement effect. Two, when the empirical complement effect is weak, is weak, the sequence of biased noises is infused in order to break the tie. The noises SER is required to be a appropriate, neither very large to counteract the previous decoding work now very small to break time. Uh, it may help to improve some other binary algorithms. For example, algorithm B and MIPD. We also performed the skill of the elements to verify the generality of criterion two. Uh, thereby, we have four binary um, algorithms, namely algorithm B, M MIPD algorithm, and they are modified variants. This finger illustrates that the first 175 rounds of the bit error ratio. Criterion two improve the convergence of both algorithms. The third part is some properties of the vectorial iterative algorithm. Firstly, we show some statistical property, uh, such as the convergence property. Suppose decoding is feasible, it is expected that APP increases when noisy variable equals to zeta and decrease when it is not to equal to zeta. Similarly, as the binary case, we have the following equation. For example, we let the LFSR be the same as the scaled experiments and the uh, priori distribution is in the second row. Uh, the number of parity checks H equals three with three taps, we calculate the uh, increasing and decreasing ratio. Uh, secondly, we show how to estimate decoding efficiency. In binary case, a threshold is introduced to mirror the decoding uh, efficiency, which is determined by the intersection point of two shrank normal distributions. In vectorial case, the intersection point becomes the intersection curve. Our idea is classification and approximation. Uh, the parity checks are divided into two classes, namely those uh, coefficients are all identity metrics denoted by uh, the set H1 and the others. Uh, the purpose is to make the parity checks independent uh, to the uh, priori distribution. Multinomial distribution is approximated by multivariate normal distribution. On the one hand, we assume uh, P0 is greater than P1 and so on. Let QC denote the probability that tau taps sum to be C. 
the probability that noise equal to zeta and xi check values equals i follows multinomial distribution for the first class of uh, parity checks using distribution pi and qi. For the second, use the distribution pi and symmetric distribution qi prime. Mm, for example, we let the parameters be the same as the previous. Uh, we calculate the th theoretical and, uh, and approximate value of this ratio. Uh, here I denote the length of the data uh, via classifying the parity checks. The result depicts that our classification is very precise. On the other hand, uh, we show how to uh, approximate the threshold by multi-normal distribution. When multivariate normal distribution is feasible, uh, the threshold can be calculated by uh, the following integral. <coughs> For example, we let parameters be the same as, previ as the previous. In order to simplify the integral, we could even slightly elevate the boundary of A without much fluctuation. Here the table, or the first, the second row shows direct computation of I in the previous, and the third row shows the normal approximation value. Uh, next, we give two bounds uh, about the complexity. First, an iterative bound. Mm. In order to perform iterative decoding, the lower bound of H should satisfy that there exist at least a zeta such that the APP P zeta star is greater than P zero star. Uh, thus, we have proposition one, which says if iterative decoding is feasible, then there is at least one zeta such that such this equation. Proposition one indicates that the vectorial algorithm may have potential advantage in some cases. For example, when SER is fixed, according to proposition one, the length of the data needed seems to be smaller than the binary uh, algorithm. The second bound is related to the expected number of corrected errors. We introduce two notations, uh, and it is re reasonable to require that uh, the expected number of correct errors is greater than one after the first uh, iteration, then the succeeding iterations may trigger more positions with uh, P zeta star greater than P zero star. Uh, summing probability values in multinomial distribution is convenient. Meanwhile, since the integral area is very complex, multivariate normal approximation is not practical when H is large. However, since the symmetric uh, distribution Q prime simul simulates the iterative process very well, we could deduce a bound using uh, multinomial distribution, which is proposition two, uh, which indicates that the expected number of positions with P zeta star greater than P zero star in the first iteration are dominated dominated by those small L. The first part applications to green 1 to 8a. Uh, green 1 to 8a includes a 128-bit uh, LFSR cascaded with a 128-bit bit NFSR. Uh, firstly, we show how to Construct a multi-dimensional linear approximation with a correlation about uh, two to the power minus uh, fifty-seven. Bundling them up, we we'll derive a linear approximation with dimension greater than nine and not greater than forty-two. SER to be two uh, to the power uh, m minus one hundred and twenty-one, uh, and uh, has the following form. When m equals to 42, the standard basis of the linear marks could be follows. Next, we estimate uh, the data complexity by the previous bounds. Suppose SER is two to the power uh, minus gamma, P0 is the maximal probability, 
probability point, we need a hypothesis that suppose there are at least two parity checks with two tips, or there are more special par parity checks with the following form. According to the two bounds when m equals to 42, for example, when we have two parity checks, according to the first bound, n is greater than two to the uh, uh, 91, and uh, according to the second bound, n is greater than the uh, two to the 129. Uh, finally, the summary. Uh, since vectorial uh, iterative decoding is, hard, is a hard investigation topic, we still have some open problems. For example, we cannot directly compare the vectorial decoding algorithm with a binary algorithm, and a theoretical advantage in the general case is an open problem. The other theoretical properties of the vectorial algorithm is still not clear. And finally, the main difficulties are figuring out the existence of the special uh, parity checks and proposing an uh, efficient algorithm to generate suitable parity checks in matrix rings instead of uh, uh, finite fields. Uh, here's the concluding remarks. Uh, we propose a vectorial iterative iterative decoding algorithm for FCA and the original uh, binary FCA is a special case of our FCA with the main one. We describe some uh, cryptographic properties and estimate the quantity of the needed parity checks and the key stream. We apply it to the stream sign for green 128A and estimate its uh, potential security margin from the port view of the vectorial probabilistic iterative decoding that's all. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thanks. So are there any questions and comments? Any questions from Koba? So Zhao Chun, I have a question. Did you try to apply your method to other stream ciphers such as Zook. Mm. Currently, we haven't. Since uh, we have some difficulties to find Zook's, uh, find a multi-dimensional linear approximation for Zook. Mm. For Zook, it uh, we found that uh, there's no very efficient way to find a multi-dimensional linear approximation. Okay, but you think the method is apl applicable, but yeah. you just cannot find the efficient. Uh, yes, this okay. uh, may need a further investigation. Okay, thanks. Any questions? Uh, hello, for your material, material coding algorithms, I want to ask, I want to ask whether there are some requirements on uh, like the length of LF, LFSR or the number of tabs or the correlation property. Uh, in our idea, I think uh, um, it, is, it is better to use the LFSR defined on the uh, finite fields rather than the matrix rings. Uh, because uh, over uh, uh, LFSR defined over finite fields, uh, there is no uh, parity checks uh, with uh, two tabs, uh, at least three tabs. Okay, thank you. So let's send the speaker again and let's move on to the next talk. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so our next speaker is Liu Fukang, and uh, his talk is New Cryptanalysis of Zook Initialization Using Modular Differences by Liu Fukang, 
威廉米尔、桑图努萨卡、王高丽、利奥伊托 and Takanori、uh, Isoba。Thank you. Thank, thanks for the introduction, and、uh, I will talk my work on cryptanalysis of Zook two hundred fifty six initialization using modular differences. So this is an overview of this work. So there are three sections: the background, the details of our attacks, and、uh, the summary of this work. So first,、uh, Zook two hundred fifty six is、uh, a new cipher、uh, proposed for the five G applications, and、uh, it is almost the same as Zook one hundred twenty eight. There are three changes. First, the key size is increased to two. 256 bits. Second, a different way to load the key and IV、uh, is used. Third,、uh, the MAC generation phase is modified.、Uh, since we focus on the initialization phase, we only to care about the first two changes. So, since its proposal、uh, in 2018, there has been two times of update. So, so now there are three versions: v1, v2, v3. So in this work,、uh, v2 is different from v1 in the loading scheme of the key and IV. v3 is different from v2 in the number of initialization runs. So in this work, we focus on the first two versions. And、uh, according to the latest news, it has been selected as one of the 3GPP、uh, confidentiality and integrity algorithm for air interface. And according to the same document, we also find that. Uh, the Sage has recommended the Rook team to increase their initialization rounds according to our analysis. So now it is increased to forty-nine rounds. And、uh, now let me、uh, briefly describe the round function of Rook. So, so for the first two versions, the total number of rounds is thirty-three rounds, and、uh, this is an illustration of the round function. So maybe at the first glance, it's very complex. So there are three layers: LFSR, BR. BR means bit reorganization, and FSM, finite state machine. So first,、uh, first the BR layer will be updated.、Uh, so we will compute、uh, three variables: x0, x1, and x2, according to six words in LFSR. For example, x0 is com is composed of the the highest sixteen bits of S5. And、uh, the lowest sixteen bits of S fourteen. So similarly, and we can compute X two, X one, and X three. And then we will update the、uh, words in LF, LFSR layer. And、uh, for convenience, we can denote the new words in LFSR by SI star. So to to come to update this layer, we first、uh, compute a intermediate variable W. It is a thirty-two bit variable, and、uh, it is computed with X zero, R one, and R two, and the addition is within modular two to the thirty-two. Then we update the word S fifteen using some modular additions,、uh, modular a、uh, prime number, a、uh, two to the thirty-one minus one. Then we update the remaining words by simply shifting the、uh, the registers. Then finally, we will update the finite state machine. And、uh, you can see from this figure, apart from the modular addition and the、uh, XOR operation, there are also the S box transform and the、uh, S and the linear transform L1, L2. So at the first glance, it is very complex. And then after the initialization is over, we can get the first stream word Z. It is a 32-bit word, and、uh, it is computed with X0, R1, R2, and X3. So There are many different types of operations, and、uh, this obviously makes the cryptanalysis very challenging, especially if we want to study the interactions between the three layers. So, how to do it?、Uh, first, to understand our attack, it's necessary to clarify the attack scenario because it is not commonly used.、Uh, but this has been considered by the Rook team and the Sage. In the security evaluation of of the Rook family, so I think it's still meaningful. So specifically, can we find an input difference 
such as that there are some there are some non random properties in delta si after t clocks of course we cannot inject the differences in the constant bits but we we are allowed to inject difference in the key and the iv so as mentioned before the key size is increased to 256 bits so we have more much more degrees of freedom to choose the uh, differences so to reach as many rounds as possible, there is indeed a shortcut, and uh, it has been used by Sage and uh, the Duke team in their security evaluation. Specifically, according to the round function, uh, only S15 is updated in a very complex way, but uh, the remaining uh, words are updated sim by simply shifting the registers. So uh, if we can detect some uh, now random properties in S15 after T minus 15 clocks, we can for sure detect the non random properties in S0 as T clocks. In other words, there are always uh, 15 uh, free runs. So that's why these types of attacks can reach so many runs. So I mean, runs and clocks has the same meaning. And uh, so the general idea uh, to construct the input difference in our attack can be summarized here. So uh, note that, uh, so you can see see that there are many, uh, so we, we hope the influence of the finite state machine is minimal by making the active S box appear as late as possible. In this case, we do not need, in this case, if we consider the differential attack, uh, we do not need to care about the different transitions in the S box, and we are mainly dealing with the modular addition. And if we use the modular differences, they are linear in the modular addition. And uh, we can see from the round function, there are many modular additions in the update of S15. So we, so we use the modular difference. But if we do not allow any active S boxes in the first few rounds, it will, we can only attack a small number of runs. There's the why the previous attack can yeah it cannot reach so much so much runs. So uh, we will relax this constraint and allow a difference to exist in the final state machine at the first few runs. But at the same time, we need to ensure they can uh, they can hold with probability one by controlling the uh, the input of IV. So yeah, so we will do this. And uh, then uh, we will construct suitable equations to describe the uh, the constraints on the input difference, such that the input difference, uh, such that the attack can reach as many runs as possible. So this is an overview of uh, uh, our, how to construct the input difference for our attacks. Uh, so so first, uh, you can see that for the first t zero minus one rounds there is always no difference in S15. So the most left one uh, registers. Then in the next two rounds, the difference are allowed to exist in S15, but they can only stay at the highest 15 bits. So they are not allowed to exist in the lowest 16 bits. In this case, in the next uh, three plus two rounds, again, there's still no active Xbox in the finance state machine. And then after one more round, the active S box will start to appear. But uh, since uh, the FSR, LFSI is updated before the final state machine, so the influence of the active S box will be reflected to S15 after one more round. So in, in total, we can, uh, we should be able to uh, trace, uh, detect a bias in the in S15 after T0 plus eight runs, because this is almost equivalent to approximating one round update of the finite state machines. And so we, I think, so it is possible to find the bounds in the difference of S15 uh, while experiments we can, yeah, like uh, using the WHT some, yeah, method. So, so indeed there's a critical, uh, 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 constraints are that the difference can only stay at the highest 15 bits. So in our case, we are considering the modular uh, difference. So in this case, we will have a condition on, we can convert them into the uh, condition on the modular difference. And uh, we can, it can be stated that the, the lowest uh, 16 bits of the modular difference can be either all zero or all one. And also, 
already said that we can always have 15 free rounds. So that's, we can indeed, if we can find such an input difference, we can attack T0 plus 33 rounds. So after careful analysis, indeed, so we tried many from, so we increased T0 from six to seven to eight, something so we tried, uh, we considered a lot. And uh, we finally found eight is the maximal value for T0 because if T0 is larger than eight, we either cannot, uh, I mean, so it will be, the constraint may be too difficult to control or uh, yeah, it will be too complex or there's no solution to the equation system or something like this. So we will inject differences in 11, uh, yeah, in 11 words in LFSR. And uh, you can also note that the problem is almost uh, equivalent to finding claims in the in S15 over multiple clocks. So how to make this clean happen? So we will add some uh, constraints. So you can see from this slide at the first round, we add four constraints. In this case, uh, there will be no difference in S15. The, this is ensured by the first equation. Then the last three uh, constraints can ensure there will be no difference on R1, but there will be difference in R2. Then in clock two, since there will be difference in the final state machine, uh, to ensure there's still no difference in S15, the first equation will be uh, much more complex. So you can check, compare it, the first equation here uh, with the equation here. So you can find that in this equation, we will involve the XOR difference and the value of the memory registers in FSM. So uh, this in this case, so we can still ensure the difference can stay in R2. And similarly, for clock three, we again can construct similar uh, constraints. And then at the, uh, so yeah, this is an illustration. Then after, at clock four, similarly, we do this, but we hope after, after clock four, there will be no difference in the final state machine. So, so we can cancel, cancel this difference. Of course, we do not know, do not know the value of this uh, question mark. So we need to find them. Then again, we, we so, so uh, I said the, the the active Xbox should be appear should be should be should appear as late as possible. So we 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 want to say how how long it can uh, go. So at clock five we have these equations, and at six seven we also have these types of equations. And at clock eight and clock nine the difference can only stay in the highest fifteen bits. So we have these types of constraints. So now we have set up all the constraints for the uh, for Zook V1 and uh, for Zook V2 we perform the similar analysis but uh, due to some reasons uh, so so I, I'm, so I said that in Zook V2 the loading scheme is changed uh, one change is that there are more there are more bits uh, set as constant bits so we cannot inject differences in that in those bits that's why we cannot attack uh, 31 rounds and that's why T0 becomes seven. And uh, yeah, it's almost the same for clock. It is the same. The constraints are the same from clock one to clock six, but from clock seven to, well, at clock seven and clock eight, it will be changed to allow the difference can only stay at the uh, highest 16 bits. Then, so now we, we have found out we have, we have set our many equations and uh, in these equations, there are uh, variables representing the modular difference, the XOR difference and the value of the register. So at the first glance, it's yeah, too complex. And, but indeed, we also should note that uh, there are many, many variables. I mean, we can control these variables. So this should be not a problem. I mean, we can use a guess and determine method. We guess some variables and we, if we have an efficient way to determine the remaining variables, then we can solve this uh, a complex equation. So we first pick some solutions of the modular difference that does not contradict the equations. Then we compute the XOR difference according to the modular difference. Maybe the, maybe if you're not familiar with the cryptanalysis of the MD Shahash family, uh, maybe it will be, yeah not so easy to follow. Uh, so in this case, at this step, indeed we need, we need to use the sign difference uh, because, yeah. And then we similarly uh, pick some solution to uh, the modular difference of S9 and uh, S5. And finally, only the modular difference of S1, S2, S3 are known. And we need to 
uh, determine their value such that the difference after the difference in the final state machine after four clocks can be canceled. Uh, this is achieved with a uh, depth first search and a mid in the middle strategies. So uh, it's shown in this figure. I'm not sure of the time, so maybe I don't have don't have too much time to explain the details. So you can see from this uh, table, uh, we uh, indeed the algorithm is very efficient, and we can find the input difference in seconds. For example, uh, this is the input difference uh, for look v1, and uh, you also can note from the bottom of this table there are constraints on the value of r2, r2 and uh, over three rounds, and uh, there are difference. This is used to ensure the different transitions over these active X boxes can hold with probability one. So, uh, so we need to ensure the input can always lead to these uh, values. That's what we call the IV correcting technique in our paper. Uh, but due to a time limit, I, I, I will not uh, give, give the details, but in general, it's just to inverse the round function and uh, convert the conditions on this memory distance on the input. And the, similarly for Rook V2, we also find the uh, input difference in seconds. And, uh, and then we, we have construct the input difference and the remaining work is very easy and everyone can do it. It's just to simulate the distribution of the, uh, dif the difference of S15. And we find that and according, and we, we it's indeed as expected that we can attack 31 rounds of Rook V1 and that we can attack uh, 30 rounds of Rook V2. And uh, if we consider a more real realistic setting where the attackers can only access the key stream words, we can also attack uh, 15 rounds of Rook V1 and 14 rounds of Rook V2. So in summary, although the round function of Zook itself looks very complex, uh, we can still uh, study the different transitions through the round function by using the tools of XOR difference, sign difference, and modular differences. And uh, according to our analysis, uh, the security margin of the first two versions looks small. And uh, I'm happy that the results has uh, push the Zook team to increase their uh, the initialization runs. So that's all, thank you. Thank you, Fukang. So any questions and comments from Koban? Any questions from Beijing? So Fukang, I have a question. Uh, we can see the method you employed for solving the equations are quite dedicated. Do you think yeah. it's possible to use constraint solvers to assist the resolution process? But I think it's already very efficient, but Maybe it's possible, but there are many different types of operations like modular difference, modular addition, and uh, yeah, XOR difference, uh, something like, and the value transition, uh, like the S box for, for example, the first equation here. Uh, maybe the, the model will be very complex because you need to model it bit by bit. So not sure, <laughs> maybe it can be done. Yeah. Okay, thanks for your answer. Any questions? Are there any questions from the chat? No. So if there are no questions, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you. Can you share the screen?
We cannot see the slides. Uh, this is not your fault, I believe. Um, is the speaker Harendra Kumar Garai in the in yes, the Zoom yes, ma'am. I am present. I am present. Oh, okay. Just, uh, uh, just that take your time. Yeah. Yes, you should share your screen then. And um, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So our last speaker of this session is. Uh, Saya Sachi Day, uh, and uh, his the title of his talk is Crypto Analysis of Reduced Run Cha Cha New Attack and Deeper Analysis. The authors are Sabi, Sab, Saya Sachi Day and uh, Hirandra Kuma Galai and uh, Sabmoy Maitra. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Am I audible? You are on Zoom, yes. So I'm, uh, okay. Thank you for the introduction. So I am Hirendra Kumar Garai, a third year graduate from Wits Bilani, Hyderabad campus, India. The topic of my talk is cryptanalysis of reduced round chacha, new attack and deeper analysis. So this is a joint work with my supervisor, Dr. Sabrisachi Dev and Shubhamoy Moitro. So let's start the talk with the introductory section. So the symmetric cipher is broadly categorized into two parts, like a block cipher and stream cipher. In the block cipher, the plain text is broken into fixed size chunks. Basically they are of 64 bits or 128 bit. And that block is encrypted one at a time. Some example of block cipher includes AES, DES, et cetera. And in the stream cipher, the mechanism is a little different. Here, a key stream is generated from the key then that key stream is then XORed with the plain text to give us a cipher text. So basically here the encryption happens in one bit or one byte at a time. Some example of stream cipher includes Salsa 20, Chacha, Grain, etc. Now let us look into the design principle while designing the cryptographic primitives. If we look, the, if we look into that, we find that the SPN based structure, ARX based structures are one of the most popular ones. But among them, ARX based structure needs a special attention. Here ARX stands for addition, rotation, and ZOR. These are very three basic operations for any CPU. So they are very hardware friendly. Also in the software side, they are very fast. So due to this reason, the ARX based design schemes uh, attain, uh, this, this scheme has in, uh, gained a huge popularity. Back in 1970, the field block cipher first used this ARX scheme to in their design. Now, the cipher of our topic, the Chacha cipher, is a stream cipher, and which have used the ARS design in its design. Daniel J. Bernstein in 2008 gave this stream cipher Chacha as an updated version for the Salsa 20 cipher. Now, let us look into the structure of the Chacha cipher. Since Chacha is a stream cipher, the main focus is on the key stream generation algorithm. So, the key stream generation algorithm it takes an input of 256 bit key and 128-bit constant and a 128-bit initial vector that is sometimes referred as attacker control inputs. All these inputs are then stored in a four by four matrix form where each entry of the matrix is of 32 bits. As you can see from the picture, the first row contains the constant vectors, the second row and third row contains the key vectors, while in the last row contains the <coughs> attacker control input. So as a total, we get an output of 512-bit key stream. Now, how did state, how do we get the key stream? This state X is then updated via the chacha round function. In the original chacha cipher, there are a total 20 chacha rounds. And each chacha round is constructed with the help of the following ARX function, which updates the vector A, B, C, D to A double dash, B double dash, C double dash, D double dash by using the equation number one. And in the design principle, it is mentioned that in the odd number of rounds, the column of the any state will be will get updated, and in the even number of rounds, the diagonals of the state x will are will will be updated. So as a total, we have a ten column rounds and ten diagonal rounds. After the twenty round updation process is completed, that state x twenty is basically then added to the initial state <clears throat> x word by word, 
and we get the final key stream Z. That is then XORed with the plain text to give us the cipher text. Now, one thing to here keep it with uh, the notice is that in equation number one, the operation that has been used can be inverted. Like all this operation has a has the reverse operations. So what does it mean? It means that in the cha cha cipher, we can go from round R to round R minus one by reversing those operations. So that is the basic structure of the cha cha cipher. How does it work? Now let us look into the cryptanalysis of cha cha cipher. So until now, the most of the cryptanalysis that has been done on this stream cipher is mostly differential linear type, where a differential where a differential approach has been applied to some part of the cipher and linear <clears throat> linear approach has been applied some other part of the cipher to get a good differential distinguisher. And a single IDUD has been used until now. One of the prominent attack techniques in the differential attack scenario is the probabilistic neutrality bits, that is PNB based attack, which was given by Amazon and others in 2008 FSE. So the main idea of the PNB based attack is to filter out those key bits that has very less influence on the output. So as a result, the complexity decreases from the brute force attack technique. The latest or most successful attack, the claim complexity of the most successful attack before our attack technique on six round cha-cha is two to the power 104.68, which was given by NATO and others. Now, the complexity formula that has been used to compute this complexity was also given by Amazon and others, and it uses, uses the equation number two. Here it was assumed that M was very, very bigger than alpha. But it is not the case that every time M is very bigger than alpha, sometimes the difference between M and alpha is not that huge, it is very small. So in that case, the formula is little updated. It was, it was updated by they and others, and the extra term was incorporated in the equation as the form, and the form becomes, the complexity formula becomes equation number three. So as you can see, there is an extra term two to the power K minus M. So it is basically the it is it basically comes from the exhaustive search of the PNBs in the last stage. Now, using this equation number three and the existing attacks, we can show that the complexity cannot go below two power k by two, where k is basically the total number of key bits that is present. But if we look into the literature, we found that there are so many works where the authors have claimed their complexity to be less than two power one twenty eight for cha cha to for the six round cha cha. So we have updated their complexity. And here I am presenting some an, an, an exhaustive list of the attacks, those who have claimed their complexity to be something and their actual complexity is a little different. For example, if we take an entry, the last entry, so it is basically the attack of NATO. So they claim their complexity to be two to the power 104.68. But we can see that there is a total number of PNBs to be 212. So to search those PNGs exhaustively in the last stage requires a complexity of at least two to the power 212. So the actual complexity becomes two power 212. So all these results on are based on six round cha-cha. Now coming to our attack approach. So as I have mentioned that until now a single IDOD has been used for the differential attack. We have, we have used a multiple IDOD approach and we have taken the uh, advantage of the symmetricity of the cha-cha in, uh, cha initial state matrix while finding the differential. So as an attacker point of view, he first partitions the key bit into four subsets, S1, S2, S3, and S4. So using the first differential ID or D1, he gets the subset S1. Using the second uh, differential ID or D2, he gets the set as S2, but he but the set S2 is mutually exclusive from S1. So he basically filters out the common element. And from similarly for I, using ID or D3, he creates the state S3, which is also mutually exclusive from S1 and S2. Once S1, S2, and S3 is created, the rest of the key bits are labeled as S4. Once this pre-processing stage is done, he then moves forward in data collecting, data collection. So the attacker chooses N1 number of IVs, V, and then collects the corresponding key stream, Z, using the original system. The same he does for, by injecting the input difference, output difference, first input difference, output difference. So as a total, he has N1 pairs of IV key stream for the first differential. Similarly, uh, for using the second and third differential, he collects N2 and N3 pairs of IV key stream. So as a total, after the data collection stage, he has N1 plus N2 plus N3 pairs of IV key stream along with the difference version. He, then, he collects this data to exploit the key. Now he sits in his local machine to recover the key bits. So first, he makes a guess for the key bits of S1 
and puts random values in the rest of the qubits. He chooses an element V from the list N1 he has, and using V and G, he creates a matrix M, state matrix M. Also, he uses the corresponding key stream with of V, Z, and creates the state Z minus M. The same thing he does for the difference matrix Z dash minus M dash. Okay, so once the two states has been created, Z minus M and Z dash minus M, M dash, he runs reverse cha cha, basically two reverse cha cha rounds on the states, Z minus M and Z dash minus M dash. Once the once he runs two cha cha round reverse round function, he checks the difference at the output difference bit position and keeps a count. If the difference occurs more than a threshold T for the N1 number of N1 number of data that he has collected for IDOD1, he declares the guess for his qubits to be right. If it is not, he then goes back to the first stage and makes another guess G and the same process is then repeated. Here, one thing to note that the threshold T is not any random number. It is basically calculated from the same formula that has been used for the data complexity. <clears throat> Once the values of S1 has been recovered properly, he puts the correct value on the S1, qubits of S1 and leave them as it is. He then moves forward in guessing the S2 qubits. He makes a guess for the S2 qubits, leaves the qubits of S1 and puts random values on the rest of the qubits and the same process he repeats. In the same way for S3 also, he does the same thing. Once S1, S2 and S3 has been recovered properly, he then guesses the S4 qubits exhaustively. That is basically, these are S4 qubits can be predicted as the PNBs. So he just searches them exhaustively. Now let us look at the complexity of this attack technique. So as you can see, we have used the three ID orders, 12, 6, 1, 0. Here 12 means the ID word and 6 means the bits, bit basically. So for the input, uh, input difference, 12th word and 6th bit. For OD also, 1 is the word and 0 is the bit. We have S1, S2, S3 as 58, 56, 50, and S4 as 92. We have used equation number 4 to calculate the complexity of our attack. And we can see that our comp our uh, the complexity of this attack technique is 2 to the power 99.48, which is less than 2 power 256 by 2. So using our attack technique, we were uh, it was possible to bring down the complexity of the attack less than 2 power k by 2. It is an advantage of this attack technique. But one thing to note that this complexity, 2 power 99.48, is depicts the fact that it is impossible to demonstrate that this attack on a uh, real system, uh, <clears throat> on a real system. So uh, also some statistical assumptions and approximations have been used while calculating the complexity, data complexity and uh, runtime complexity also. So, and they are also not theoretically justified, experimentally justified. So for that, to justify them uh, experimentally, we have implemented a toy version of the Chacha cipher. So that toy version of the Chacha cipher mimics the original Chacha cipher except for the fact that here each entry is of eight bit. So as a total, we get a 128 bit output. Also the toy chacha uses a 64 bit key and the ARX and the round function for the toy chacha that has been also adjusted accordingly. One can refer our article for further details on this toy chacha. We have implemented the attack technique of Amazon and the attack technique of Moistro that is the chosen IV approach. And we can see that the experimental values uh, also, one thing we have implemented do all these attacks on 3.5 round toy cha cha. And you can see that the experimental values justifies the theoretical values for both of the attack technique. We have also implemented the multiple IDOD attack technique on three round toy cha cha to see how much improvement we are getting. So, for single IDOD, as you can see from the last row, complexity row, that the experimental value is 2 power 23.01 for the single IDOD approach. But for the multiple IDOD approach, the experimental value becomes 2 to the power 15.1. So we, has an, we see an improvement of almost 2 power 8. So this makes us hopeful that our attack technique or our attack technique or some other attack technique similar to our attack technique can be implemented on other ARX ciphers also to bring down the complexity. And these are some of the references that I have used while preparing the slides. Lastly, Dhonobad ISCR and FSE 2023 organizing committee to make give us an opportunity to present our work. Thank you. Thank you very much. So any questions and comments from Koba?
So any questions from Beijing? Okay, I have a question. Uh, yes, sir. Are there yes. any, so can you elaborate on the statistical uh, assumptions in your attacks? Okay, so in the complexity formula, if we look in the data complexity formula uh, that has been used, that I have not mentioned here, that you can find in the literature, there is some approximation, statistical approximation like a binomial approximation, binomial distribution has been approximated by a normal distribution. So for those things, I have mentioned like the statistical approximation by that thing I meant. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Are there any questions from the chat? No, no questions on the chat. Okay, so if there are no questions, let's thank all the speakers again for their great talks. Okay, this is the end of this session. Thank you very much.